Here we go. Hey, uh, hey guys, hope you can stay on for a few minutes here and just interact with Corey. And uh, Corey, thanks for the shout out. Um, and I, I, um, I, I received that because man, I had to, I had to do exactly what you're talking about. Uh, when we started our ministry, when I started, you know, my work experience back when I was 20 year old, you know, find people better than me. And there's a lot of them out there. And, uh, and so, um, I, I, I love what you shared because it is something that I definitely, definitely, uh, have been trying to practice myself and do. And, and I think you're spot on Corey with your analysis that, it's really difficult to do that unless you have some security uh, and some confidence. And uh, so when you say, are you insecure? Are you, uh, you know, will this person become better than me? I, that's definitely part of that process. And, and you're who you are in Christ. Your identity is, is huge. Uh, Corey, you may not realize this, but that's, that's been what I've been teaching on this entire calendar year is identity. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, getting comfortable in your own skin. And when you're comfortable in your own skin, guess what? Then you don't have to second guess things that are going on around you. And then the other thing you may not realize this, Greg's been teaching from the book of Philippians. And the verse you read today is exactly what he taught on last, last week. So the tie-ins today are just awesome, just incredibly awesome. And um, yeah, I'm all over this. I'm all over this. And I'm, I'm I want to be continue to learn, you know, uh, what scares me with a lot of guys is when they say to themselves, well, I've learned everything I need to learn. And when you, and you have that kind of a spirit, uh, that unteachable spirit, that's, that's when it gets a little crazy for guys. I mean, we need to always be a recipient of truth and then also communicating truth back out on the, on the back end. So I, I'm, I'm a huge believer in this. Second Timothy two, two is, is one of my life verses. So it's really mm-hmm. good. Yeah. You guys, give me a response, a reaction uh, to what Corey shared today. I, I know, I know, I'm all in on this. Have anybody else all in on this and see the value of it? Hey, Corey, um, fantastic message and one that speaks to all ages. And I think the older we get, the more we see, you know, the the wisdom uh, in, in in those words. Uh, just one scripture I wanted to share is first. Thessalonians 2, 4, on the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. Uh, right at the first, you, you mentioned how we get set, we second guess. We go, who, who am I to be sharing with people about God? You know, well, that's just the enemy speaking to us. And, and you spoke to the identity issue. And, and of course, Rod is is us. Um, I mean, that's his message for this whole series. But um, uh, unless we know our true identity in Christ, then we we can't embody the idea that we're proved by him, uh, regardless of what the enemy says. So thank you for a fantastic message. Mm-hmm. Amen, Cecil. That is spot on. Other thoughts, reactions uh, to what Corey shared? I know, I know there's some guys out there. Come on, unmute yourself and speak. Hey, Corey, what if you, uh, I kind of feel like sometimes I, especially when I was around 20 years old, I thought I was an expert on anything. And I would give people advice all the time, you know, confident as could be. Then I gave somebody some advice and later on I decided it wasn't very good advice. And I thought, you know, I'm not so smart. I shouldn't be telling anybody anything. And so I kind of, <clears throat> even to this day, I've kind of got shell shock. I, I, I don't feel like I should be telling people how to, how they should live their life and things like that. You know, I mean, especially something, but something that important, but how do you get over that feeling that, that, you know, maybe you, you know, you found out you weren't as smart as you thought you were and da, 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 that kind of thing. So. Mm. Yeah. So just a thought, and maybe someone else can have some, some input on this too. But my first thought as you ask that question is simply like the, the heart that comes behind it. You know, you described if, if you're in your twenties and maybe coming across as like, Hey, I'm confident and I've got the answers and here I am versus someone who is just has a sense of humility. Like, I mean, even as you asked the question, Carl, I, I get this 
this heart from you. Like, I think if you communicated something to someone, it would probably be today well received mm -hmm. because I'm not hearing from you like a, you know, I've got the answer. And if you would just listen to me, then you could be like me, you know, but rather like, Hey, we're all on a journey. We all have something to learn. And here's just a thought I'd love to share. And so just a sense of humility, right? When we, when we, when we live from a place of humility, I think that's, and, and also vulnerability, right? And just our own failures or weaknesses, um, making those a part of the conversation. I, I think people want to listen to that, um, or they're open to listen to that, right? And so, again, even as you ask the question, Carl, I would just encourage you to say, I think from whatever you did or the way you communicated in your 20s, you did not communicate that way right now, even in asking the question. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. That's, uh, yeah, I need to give some thought into that because like I said, it's it's easy kind of just to walk away and not commit yourself, you know, not, not want to make that mistake again. You know, gosh, I hate to tell them that and then find out it's, you know, I gave totally bad advice, but uh, yeah. So, well, I appreciate that, that insight. Thanks. Hey, I saw something this weekend that uh, from a guy that uh, he's he's probably 20 years older than me. And uh, I've seen him do this before, but he carries around in his in his front pocket a little just a little notepad. And I noticed that as I'm sp speaking or other people speaking, he is writing down things. And you can tell he is still, you know, he's in his 80s and he's still writing stuff down so he can remember. Oh, I, I need to remember that. So one of the things I said to him on Saturday, we're at the Faith and Family, I was talking about my dad's passing is on July 12th. And I, I said, that's, that's my dad's glory day. That's my dad's glory day. And he goes, oh, I got I to gotta write that down. And this morning, I already got a note from this guy reminding me what I had said. And, he, and, he, and it's because he wrote it down. He remembered it. And he, he says, I'm going to apply this to my own life because he's got an anniversary date coming up of his own spouse passing away. And he says, that's, that's what I'm going to refer to now, her, her glory day. You know, here's a guy, he, he has a teachable spirit, a teachable heart. He is looking for insight and he's not aged out. He's not saying I've learned everything I've learned. I'm going to still uh, respond when I see things. And now guess what? He's taken that truth that I taught him just two days ago, and he's passing it forward to somebody else. He's, he's doing exactly what second Timothy two, two is talking about things he's learned he's now teaching others uh other reaction other responses to what Corey shared guys Carl reminded me of when, when my kids were teenagers someone said you should put a note on the refrigerator that says attention teenagers move out now while you and get a job while you know everything <clears throat> but <clears throat> I'm I'm someone in the fourth quarter of life, and I and I do believe that I have insights to share, and I don't go around tapping people on the shoulder and say, "Hey, pay attention! I'm 77 years old. You need to listen to me." But there are times when when um, a conversation is going on, either directly or indirectly, with me, I said, "Hey, wait!" I'm thinking, "Hey, wait a minute! I I had a situation like that, and I learned something really important." that I can share with, with this, with this, other, with another person, with a group of people, but, um, but there have been, there have been major, major turning points in my life where, or I could directly see God working, how, or how God had worked in my, um, in where I spent the bulk of my career, where I, the formation of my family, uh, saving, saving uh, appointment with a heart surgeon, uh, just major, major things. And, 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 I, and I love sharing how God did that with other people. Uh, the, heart, the heart surgery in particular, when I went back to work, people would say, oh, did you have a heart attack? I said, no, God put the urge in my, in my spirit to, to go hike on 14. -er. I said, oh. Which, and which is something I would never do. And I would never do an Iron Man either, Corey. <laughs> I'm not up to that. Or even even when I was younger, I was anyway. But you know, and I love telling them that, telling other people that. So that's enough for that's me. That's good. 
Mike, I saw your hand up. Go for it. Yeah. Corey, thank you. Very, very nicely structured, the whole message. And you interspersed stories, personal stories of situations that then helped you to understand. And I always remember something that Winston Churchill, Sir Winston Churchill said, he said, at the age of 15, I couldn't believe how dumb and stupid my parents were. <laughs> and when I got to 21, I couldn't believe how much they'd learned. See, <laughs> our perspective is based very much on the experience that we've had in life up to the particular point that you're at. And in my business now, which I've had for 21 years, teaching people how to communicate in the live environment through professional training, but mainly through personal experience over life and with help from a lot of people in understanding what goes on in this environment. How do we communicate? I have found, and, and I'm not being derogatory, I'm, I'm just being truthful, that many guys in the American culture have the greatest difficulty with what you've been teaching this morning, Corey. Yes, they believe that being super confident about everything is what it's about. I've learned that totally the opposite way is what it's all about. Yeah. And that's how Christ teaches us. It's yeah. um, a great blessing this morning. Thank you, Corey. Mike, you're right. That humility is what it's, what, it's what it's all about. It's not about coming off as the know-it-all. It's coming off as a humble. When you have that humility, that's when God speaks in you and through you for, for his glory, not your own glory. That's so good. That's so good. Um, other reaction, guys? Hey, Corey, one of the things that stood out to me in this is that whole slow down for your daughter uh, piece. And we, we can miss such great opportunities to invest in people just because we got our plans and our thoughts and this person's going to just bog me down. But what happens, your daughter made you better because you slowed down. You know, you, you got, you got, you didn't miss anything. You didn't miss out on something that, and, and, to, and the thrill of you uh, not only going back, but then finishing a marathon with her right by your side and now seeing what she's doing. And that speaks volumes, absolutely speaks volumes. And that, and that joy, that joy supersedes anything that you could have done by leaving her in the dust and saying, well, she'll just need to figure it out. Man, that's, that's that teaches. That's a powerful lesson right there. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that kind of reminds me of Boy Scout. My Boy Scout experience too is that one of the things that's really hard for new adults, you know, leaders that come in is to to, to allow uh, the boys to do it slow, do it wrong, make mistakes, learn from it, and everything. They're so much more. Willing to, well, I know how to do it. Let me just jump in. I can't wait. Well, you know, I can't wait for breakfast. Let me just jump in and do it. I'll do it for you, you know. And it's it's so hard for them to figure that out that this isn't about you. This is about these guys, you know, and and learning and, and uh, learning to make mistakes. But I, I really saw that. And, and I had a hard time with that, too. Gosh, you, you got to be so patient and sit back and and let them make mistakes, you know, and kind of coach them and everything. But uh but definitely with boys that age from, you know, 11 to 18 or whatever, you're going to, they're going to make mistakes, but uh, you can't just jump in and do it for them. But, but it's so hard to, to back away and, and, you know, just watch them do something wrong and learn from it. But I saw that firsthand a few weeks ago, the work project that we did with collective company, we had a guy there with his two young boys and we were doing some tree trimming and I saw him exhibit exactly what you're talking about, Carl. He let those boys have the loppers. He let those boys have the different instruments to cut this. So he could have come in and said, hey, we're going to get this job done fast. But he he did a wonderful job of just watching them and working with them and pointing out. And I pulled him aside when we finished the work project. I said, man, thank you for thank you for demonstrating 
what this is all about with your boys and uh, the lessons they learned and the encouragement they received. And yeah, it took more time, but man, the payoff's going to be huge for those boys. Huge. And I, I told him as a dad, thank you for not trying to just, you know, rush and fix it. And, you know, Hey, you don't know what you're, you know, he could have been so negative and so such a downer and those boys felt like a million bucks because they got to do something they saw dad do. And it was awesome. Hey, Corey, thank you so much, brother. I always love listening to you teach. Um, sorry, I, I missed most of the the um, discussion time, though. I, I've got six of my seven grandkids at the house, and uh, they all woke up at the same time. And Mimi is uh, out for a little bit, so uh, I was... Uh, I was the cereal pourer and milk pourer for a little bit there, but so many things she said just hit me. And one of them, you know, my kid, my two kids are parents of three and four kids. And, uh, but you said parent out of trust, not out of fear. And I think I can use that even in grandparenting as well. And it's also something I can pass along, um, you know, to my, my adult children who have young children and, um, brother, that's the ripple effect in something as simple as that is, well, I, we can't even fathom really what it might be. That could be generational and, uh, pretty much all the principles you were teaching today have that same, uh, uh ability. And so thank you for sharing. Thank you for uh, I love your your illustrations were captivating to me, at least. I, I loved them and they were perfect for what you were trying to get across. So um, if we ever think we're, we're too good to learn anymore, um, we, as Dan would say, are in deep, deep trouble. So uh, I think just keeping that teachable spirit, um, which is wrapped up in humility, which you were just talking about is exactly where we got to be. So just thanks for that reminder. Uh, We don't have to hear profound things all the time for them to become profound uh, instruments in our life. And so uh, you certainly, you certainly provided that today, brother. So thank you. I heard the amen on that. Guys, any other reactions before we say goodbye for the morning? It's very powerful. It's a powerful word today. You know, I just throw out a thought of sometimes when we seek to find someone better, it it doesn't always, uh, and we can find discouragements along the way, right? Because, um, so an example in my Ironman world, so one of the things, one of the other irons I have in the fire is that I have, a, I actually have a third website, it's called Corey Stout Ironman, and I have a heart to uh, come alongside of triathletes to do life coaching like I'm doing with Alan and uh, also to do motivational speaking in the private or secular world around Ironman lessons learned. So anyway, long story short, um, the Iron Cowboy is probably one of the most well-known triathletes in the world, uh, completed 50 Ironmans in 50 states in 50 days. And then later completed 101 Ironmans in 101 days in a row. Mm. So just, I mean, unfathomable, right? So I have a pretty good friend of mine personally knows the Iron Cowboy. He's like, hey, I'll, I'll get you in touch with this guy, right? So you can have a phone call with him. And so I reach out to him with a text and just like, hey, Iron Cowboy, friend of, you know, this guy, connected me and would love to just a 15, 20 minute conversation, you know, with you. And I just wanted to just throw out an idea of what I'm doing and, you know, what my heart is and see if there was any kind of conversation we could have or well, whatever. And so he replies with like, Hey, I'm super busy. And here's why I'm like, Hey, I totally understand. No problem. I, I just wanted to ask you about some questions about, you know, my heart is to do life coaching, you know, not so much triathlon coaching, like if, if, if someone's never done an Ironman, I could walk alongside of them, you know, to help them learn some things to do their first one. But if someone's done four and they just really want to get better for their fifth one, I'm really not that guy, you know, to help them. But I am a guy who would love to walk alongside of Ironman triathletes and do life coaching. 
And so you, I, anyway, I, I summarized that in a few sentences and just said, I'd love to, I just was wanting to, you know, pick your brain and see if you had any thoughts for me. And he replied in a text and basically said, um, I already know someone who's doing that, me. And I just came out with a curriculum um, and I have 800 guys signed up, paid like a whole bunch of money a piece to do this. So, and that was about it. I mean, what I received, what I felt like he was saying to me was like, hey, this is my territory. I've already figured it out. I've got my avenues and you're not welcome. It's just like, come on. You know, I mean, I was just, it was like, I don't know. I just felt like I received the exact opposite of what I, I just taught on, you know, from him. And so it was kind of discouraging. Um, but yet I'm trying to use it as motivation as well. Um, to not be like that, right? And to, and to use it as a reminder when, you know, when people do come alongside of me, how do I respond? What do they, what do they receive from me? Um, and to, to, yeah. So anyway. That's a great, that's a great way to end today. Cause that's along the way, there's going to be all these kind of things happen, but you know what? We, when we stay in our lane, do what God's called us to do. Yeah, he'll even use that conversation to steer us in a direction that will help us long term. So thank you that you received that, you know, Hey, I asked the question. I didn't get quite the answer I was looking for, but it actually motivates me to keep pressing on with this, uh, with this calling that I have in my life. Hey, Matt Patterson, I see you want to say something, go for it. Yeah. I just wanted to throw out one kind of quick thought or kind of a praise to Corey. Um, I'm one of the guys on a softball team that, been playing with him for a couple of years and um, it's always been been a pleasure to do that and when Corey was kind of leading the team he did make a point to kind of have a little devotional time um, either before or after each of our games that I think kind of helped kind of keep everybody grounded to it. it didn't matter really what what happened with the game it was more about the the fellowship time together and taking a, a little bit of time to prepare something to share with each of us and just kind of pray over everybody so something that I really appreciated and that since I've taken over the team, I've tried to kind of keep that going. So just kind of a, a shout out to Corey and thanking him for, for doing that. And a quick shout out to Matt. Thanks for leading the team. Now it's so nice just to show up and uh, be able to play and try not to say anything. <laughs> and uh, real quick. So they played a spring league, which I didn't play. So I came back for the summer league, which is what I've been a part of for the last four or five, six years. And Matt asked me my first game back, like, Hey, how'd you feel today? You know, you didn't play spring league, get jumping back in. And it's basically like, I feel old, <laughs> I feel sore, but I said, Matt, I literally Matt and like his wife and a couple other young adult guys were standing there. And I said, you know what? Literally the reason I'm here, just what I shared earlier, the reason I'm here, I don't need any more exercise. I can get plenty of that. Right. Um, I'm getting older. Um, the reason I'm here, I just, these guys have become my friends. You know, they really have become my friends and I just love doing life with them, hanging out with them and um, j just kind of spurring each other on. So, Matt, thanks for being a part of that. You're a good guy. You lead well. And when you're old, you know, four for four is not the goal. When you're old, the goal is not getting injured. <laughs> exactly. So you're a, it's a good night when you don't have a, you know, a hamstring pull, a hamstring that pops or something. <laughs> That's good. Anything else, gentlemen? Hey, this is great. I have one oh, go, go I for it. One, I had one comment. The uh, Corey's example when he was looking back and seeing his daughter way back, that First Corinthians 13, love is patient. He mm -hmm. had the patience to hang back and, and to obviously his, his daughter, he loves deeply. But when you're looking for someone else upstream who's you want to reach out, someone who has patience for you is probably a good thing to look for too. Mm. And, yeah, the, and the Iron Cowboy obviously didn't have patience. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wins when you get the when you're looking through the eyes of the Lord and through the eyes of Scripture. Hey, Corey, great stuff. Cannot hey, wait yeah. for you. To Real quick. Oh, Real Mike, quick. go for it. Go. Hey. I've learned much more recently than early on in my life. Um, yeah, I, I always thought, I know it all. I'm fine. I'm great. 
And then you go through the stage of realizing you don't know it all. <laughs> then you get to the stage where I'm at now is, I don't have a right to keep all this knowledge and skill and information to myself. No. Otherwise, when I pass, it's gone. And I'm trying to pass it on to as many people as I can. Yeah. So thank you, Corey, again. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Gentlemen, goodbye. God bless you. It's been a great Thanks, morning. Corey.